Hi, Randy the Mobile Home Guy here again. Today we're dealing with an M1M furnace and we got a call today that they had um, no heat. So we looked at this and it was flashing four times. It was lockout due to failed ignition. Now in this one we were looking down here and we were getting igniter in this really tiny little flame. So what we want to look at is why that might be. So this is an intertherm furnace and it looks something like this. Um, and the valve most often looks like this here. Um, so you're going to take this screw off and this screw off here holds on this valve right here, okay? So this screw here, right there, and that screw there, and then this pulls straight out. Do take these wires off, it doesn't matter if, uh, so they're just on little spades. So if we were to get these wrong, see even backwards, that would be okay, that doesn't really matter. So now we can see the valve here. We're just gonna take this screw here off and this screw off holds the bracket and it comes straight out. Hopefully we're on a flex line. If not, we'll have to disconnect um, the main line if you're on that little hard line. Sometimes we'll have a hard line and we'd have to turn off a shut off valve for that. But this one on a flex line, we don't have to do anything. You might want to turn the power off to this unit. Um, by disconnecting these, you have um, disconnected the power to this. But connecting, disconnecting this, turn off the power, take out these two screws when it's on a flex line, pull straight out, kind of twist as you pull and it should come right out and we'll look at that. Okay, we've taken the screw out here and the screw on the other side, so we're just going to kind of rattle and pull and we'll see what comes straight out. And the piece that we're looking for is this piece right here. This is the orifice for the furnace. Okay, so you can see this piece right here. On this intertherm furnace, most often times that's a 7 16 On Coleman, that's often a half inch. But uh, this is the piece, so we're gonna take that off and we're gonna look and see what's going on down inside of there. Okay, so we've loosened this here. We're gonna take this all the way off. I suggest using the actual wrench size instead of a crescent wrench. Um, sometimes a crescent wrench, if these are on too tight, will strip it out. But what we're gonna take this out, we're gonna look inside of there and see what we can see. So if you can see down inside of there, we can see there's a spider web in there, okay? You see that spider web down there? That's not supposed to be there, of course, so we're going to dig that out, okay? And usually there's a spider in there. Sometimes it'll kind of jump out at you, so we'll see what it's going to do today. Okay, so we can see inside of there the spider web there. Um, we, this is obviously not supposed to be there. So there's a little species of spider. What we want to do is we want to dig that out of there. Sometimes that spider will kind of jump out at you. But we're trying to get this spider web totally out of there. Okay, we can see... There he is. See part of that uh, spider there. And we're going to clean this all the way out. Um, it's like there was uh, two nests in this particular one. But uh, we're going to clean all the way down in there. Um, sometimes you can use a Q-tip to get all that stuff out of there. But uh, we're going to try and clean that out, okay? Okay, or a Q-tip, something to that effect. We're really trying to clean all of the, the grime and everything out of there. Trying to get all the web and most oftentimes there's a spider and it just seems to be one species of spider. It's a little uh, kind of translucent, almost greenish spider in most of the ones that we find here in Colorado, but uh, most oftentimes that's going to be the case. Um, just check this really well. Clean it out. And then if you see that, you can almost guarantee that's your problem. So we're going to finish off here. Put the orifice back on. Tighten it up. Don't over tighten that orifice when you put it back on. And uh, just kind of cinch it down and a quarter turn past hand tight should be good enough. Um, so, and then put it back together and give it a test. Okay, we've removed the spider. We see we got uh, glow there on our igniter. Now we're just waiting for the, uh, for the timer to go off on the circuit board. That's those clicking sounds you're hearing. All normal, so now we're gonna see how big the flame looks now. So that's, what, that's really what we're looking for. Um, so that big flame there, now that we can see we cleared the spider out of there. Okay, a little yellow, we'll try to work on that. See the blue, the blue right there to there is what we're looking for. We're really looking for a nice huge flame roaring over here, but blue from there to there. And then the tips are gonna always be yellow, but uh, this looks like a good flame, it's a good roaring flame. That's what we're looking for.